Hello, today we're going to talk about variances, everybody's favorite topic. We're going to talk about the direct material variance and the labor variances for this video. Next I'm going to do overhead. But I've made a chart up here that I always use. Uh, this is the usage, usage side is right here. And this is the material that you actually use. So I have the standard quantity and the standard quantity is the standard quantity that you should have used at that production level. So you always use the actual production level that you're at times the pounds per unit or whatever you should have used. Okay, or ounces per unit, gallons per unit, whatever you should have taken. And you take that times your standard price. And then this column is the actual quantity that you used times your standard price. And that gives you then the difference is the material quantity variance. That's what this is. And that can be either favorable or unfavorable. And I set it up this way because if it's negative, it's unfavorable. If it's positive, it's favorable. And then this is the purchase side. This is the actual quantity of material that you purchased. So it's the actual quantity purchased times your standard price. And then this one is the actual quantity purchased times the actual price. And again, the difference between those two is the material price variance. And it can be favorable or unfavorable. The nice thing about the way I have this set up is that every time, no matter what you do, if it's negative for anything, it's going to be unfavorable. If it's positive, it's favorable. Okay. And also in this video, we're going to be doing labor, and that's the standard hours. Now, the standard hours is the same type of thing. You take the actual production level that you're at times the hours that it should have taken to produce one unit, and then you take that times your standard wage. And then this is the actual hours work times the standard wage. And the difference between those two is your labor efficiency variance. And again, it's negative, it's unfavorable. If it's positive, it's favorable. This is actual hours worked times the actual wage paid. And the difference between those two is what they call a labor rate variance. And it's favorable or unfavorable. Okay. So what we have with this is an example. This is a second place, second place company manufactures trophies. The following standards have been adopted by the manufacturer one for one for the manufacturer of one trophy. I know a lot of people like to work at second place. Uh, the direct materials, this was the standards that they established where they said it takes two pounds of material for each trophy and it's $1.50 per pound for a total of $3 a trophy. Direct labor takes 0.75 hours. Those probably could be given to you as 45 minutes. They take 45 over 60 to get you 0.75. And that's, they, we're paying them an average of $12 an hour or $9 a trophy. Verb overhead is based on direct labor. So we take 0.75. The predetermined overhead rate for variable overhead is 440 per hour. For fixed is 560 per hour. And that's my unit know, price. And we'll get more on that in the next video. Okay. The normal capacity is 12,000 trophies. We actually produced 11,200. So that's what we're going to be using, 11,200 down here, because that's what we have. And then here is my actual cost. I purchased 25,000 at $1.52. I used 22,300. It took me 8,500 hours at 1165. And then there's my overhead. So we'll come down here. We'll jump back up there every time from time. This is, I always do this. So I know what I'm doing. Okay, I always put this down here. So I just that's just for me. And I lot I won't spell it out most of the time. I'll put SQ times SP, AQ times SP, you know, that type of thing. And MQB for this. Okay, so for this one, this is standard quantity. And remember the standard quantity, we have to find out how much we actually used. Okay. So the actual production was eleven thousand two hundred units. So that's what we put in there. The standard price of the standard the pounds per unit was two pounds. So we'll put two pounds in there. So we should have used 11,200 times two pounds or 22,400 pounds. The price, standard price is $1.50. So to get this, then we'll take the 22,400 times $1.50 or $33,600. So that's my standard. This is the actual quantity used. If you remember, that's right there, 22,300. So that's what we'll bring in here, 22,300. Standard price was still $1.50. So we'll multiply those two out, 22,300 times $1.50. And that gives me 33,400. Okay, now remember I said you just subtract them. 
So you'll take the equal 33,600 minus 3,450, and that gives you 150. And that one is favorable because it's positive, right? Now, we don't use negative numbers. Okay. Now, this one here I just have in here for the MQV, so I know what it is. That's the material quantity grains. That's for me. Okay. Over here, the actual material purchased, which was 25,000 pounds. Standard price was not 15, but $1.50. So we take 25,000 times the $1.50, and that gives me 37,500. And this one's going to be 25,000 pounds purchased. We actually paid $1.52 from it. That's what this is right here, $1.52. So then we'll multiply these two together, $25,000 times $1.52. And again, the difference is equal, now because this is absolute value, I'm going to do the ABS and then 37.5 minus 38,000, close, because I do not want, and we're going to, uh, that is going to be unfavorable because that would be negative, right? And that is the material price variance. Okay. So that's how you do that one. Now, the journal entries for this are really, after you have, the reason why I do this also makes the journal entries really easy. The raw materials inventory is equal to the 37,500. Material price variance is 500. Okay. Now, it's a debit because it's unfavorable. If that had been favorable, it would have been a credit. And the accounts payable then is 38000 Okay, so there's your material inventory, material price variance, and accounts payable. Now for the other side, the usage, you do the same thing. This is the work in process. Oh, wait, we got that labeled over there. Work in process, that's equal to, that always goes in a standard, so that's the 33600. Uh, the material quantity variance, see that's favorable. So that's the 150, and raw material inventory, that's the standard, that's the 3450. Okay, now that's how you do your basic entry to record, that's your entry to record the purchase and to record the work in process. To close out the variances, okay, the material quantity variance, you close them into the cost of goods sold if they're in material, so that's going to be the 150. Uh, the we'll skip the material the cost of goods sold the material price variance is a 500 so this one is simply the difference which would be 350 okay because these two together need to equal 500 and you see down here that it does okay so it's simply the difference between the 500 and the 350 to make a balance okay that is the material variance Okay, and there was the usage times the two pounds to get the standard pounds that you should have used at 11,200 times the dollar fifty to get the standard. And then this is the actual usage times the standard, the actual purchase times the standard price, and the actual times the actual price. And the difference then is you always use the absolute values so that you don't have negative numbers. Okay. For labor, we do the same type of thing. The standard hours. This is the standard hours used. Remember, we used 11,200 units is what we used. Each unit requires 0.75 hours. So remember, that's back up here. Uh, get dizzy when doing this, but that was right there was my direct labor. 0.75 hours uh, for every unit. And the use we actually produced 11,200 trophies, which is right there. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. So then we'll take this this. 11,200 times 0.75 hours. So we should have used 8,400 hours. That's the hours we should have used. My standard is $12 an hour. So I take 8,400 times 12, and that gives me $100,800. We actually used 8,500 hours. That's a given. Standard was $12. So we have 8,500 times 12, and that's 102,000. And again, the difference then, this is equal to 
ABS. ABS is absolute value. 100,000 minus the 102. And that one will be unfavorable because that actually comes up to a negative number. And I want that over to there. Okay. And this is the labor efficiency variance. Okay, this is the 8,500 8, hours we actually used. We actually paid them 1165 So you take the 8,500 times the 1165 okay? And then we'll do the equal ABS, absolute value, 102 minus the 99,500. And that gives me 2975. And I don't have that formatted. There we go. I don't have the 1200 formatted either. But I did. Okay. And this one is favorable. Because again, it's less. And this is the labor rate variance. Okay. So here, the entry is a little bit different. We don't have the purchase. So uh, for this one to start with, we have equal work in process is always a standard. So that's the 100,800. Then I notice I, I have the whoa, labor efficiency variance. Yeah, because that's a debit. That's unfavorable. So that's for 1,200. The labor rate variance is 2975. And wages payable is 99.025. And that takes care of that one. Okay. Again, if this was favorable, it would be a credit. If this was unfavorable, it would be a debit. And those would be switched around. You'll remember debits always go before credits. Okay. Now, to the close them out, of course, you would, the debit, labor rate variance would be a debit. The labor efficiency variance would be a credit. And then the cost of goods sold is the difference between the two, or 1775, and that closes out the variances at the end of this, end of the week, end of the month, end of the year, whenever you do closing entries. That is the variances. Again, we take the actual production that we was at times the standard hours allowed for each unit to get the standard hours that we should have used, times the $12, which is our standard rate. And that gives me my um, standard cost, which goes into work and process. The middle one is the actual hours used, which was up here, 8,500, which was given um, someplace in through here, right there, 8,500. So that's where the 8,500 comes from, times your standard wage, and that gives you the 102. And then the actual hours times actual wage to get the actual wages payable okay then for the the difference is your labor efficiency and labor rate variances okay and then work in process is the standard and then record your two variances remember if it's unfavorable to debit if it's favorable to credit and then the wages payable will be that cell right there which is the actual wages that you paid out and then sometimes i don't know if they'll ask you for closing entries but if you do you just, if it's a credit here, you debit the account, and like this one is a debit, so you credit the account, and then the cost of goods sold can be a debit or credit, depending upon which way you need to go. Okay, so that's it for the variances, and uh, next one will be for the overhead.